Sirius XM hits one. Hi, it's Mikey Piff, and I am uh, very excited to have a, a good friend with us in the studio who uh, has a, an, a Netflix documentary out, which I surprised surprise to me. Was it a surprise to you? Louis Capaldi, everyone. I am big on Netflix. It's me, Jenna Ortega, and all the other things that are on Netflix, which I know all of them. Of course I do, because I am now a Netflix employee. That's true. I mean, listen, if you didn't see his Instagram and his, his beautiful tease for his mm. his Netflix special as characters from Bridgerton and multiple other shows. Yes. You, and let me tell you, in a dress, like, you know, you know how to rock the runway. I was really giving it my all, and I felt, do you know what it was? I felt like the, the secret is to not wear anything underneath. Ah, man. That's, 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 not, that's well, a secret. You you're really to. spilling the tea to all the guys. Yeah, now. just let yourself bash against the silk. Bash against the silk with inside the dress, the lining. That's when you really come alive, I feel. True. Yeah. And you come alive in this documentary. See that Good transition segue. there? segue. I uh, like that. It's called How I'm Feeling Now. There's no easy way to jump into this thing. No. But the, it's sad. You know, I, I, I don't think it's as sad as, as maybe you, you, you... It's somber. It's touching. Mm. It's got some family elements. Obviously, it's got personal stuff. Yeah. But the thing that's interesting to me is... I, I mean, did you kind of know what this was going to be when it started in 20, 29, 2019? When did it start exactly? So the, the the production team and the director came on around the start, early, late 2019, early 2020. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yeah, no, I thought it was going to be the coolest thing ever. I thought it was going to be, because obviously before COVID, I had a bunch of shows planned 2020. I was like, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to go tour the world and it'll be like a sort of lap of honor. And they're getting me at my top. Like, I'm playing at all these arenas and everyone's going crazy. What it actually became was quite a intimate um, situation where they spent, basically lived with me in my flat and in my parents' house for the best part of two and a half years. Now, I don't know if you're planning on filming a documentary about your life. I would maybe give it a miss. How did you fit that many people in your family home? I'm used to f squeezing people in. Don't you worry about that. But um, it's uh, yeah, it was a wild one. It's just it's such a there, you have to put a microphone on all the time, and then you're worried about oh, I hope I don't say anything bad. Not that weird, but you know <laughs> Does what I mean. Capaldi say anything bad? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but I think yeah, it was just that it was a. Uh, it's just that there's a lot going on, and I hated like walking around in public with the cameras and all the rest of it. Because then I, I feel like if it was me looking at someone else do that, I'd be like, look at this loser, look at this loser. Who does this person think they are walking around with a camera and all the rest of it? So, um, so yeah, I I preferred it when they were not around, but. I am really pleased with what they got, and I think that's the thing to really, if you really want a sort of broad, like honest portrayal of who you are or whatever, I guess you have to sort of have them around you all the time. Right, as, as the nature of a documentary, and I felt I didn't want it to feel like. Sometimes I watch people's documentaries and it feels a bit like propaganda. And I didn't want it to feel like that. I wanted it to feel as normal as possible. So. Yeah, the rest of the stuff is Lewis Capaldi propaganda. Yeah, that's that. Don't you worry. I'm I'm really social shoving, media. All that's that's one hundred. I'm shoving myself down people's throats in that regard. But with this, I feel like it's a much more sort of. It's weird because I've been reading some reviews of this, mm -hmm. and it's different because when you hear reviews of an album, it's like, fine, cool. I've, this is like a piece of work. But then when someone reviews a film about your life and they don't like it, it's basically them saying, yeah, this guy's life sucks. It's terrible. It's really boring. Nothing's happening. It's an it's an odd feeling. Do you know what I mean? But um, but it's been good. People seem to like it. I'm pleased with it. The director, Joe Perlman, and the producer, Alice Rhodes, did a really good job. And, uh, yeah, I'm chuffed. Yeah. So I the uh, so just not to totally glaze over it because it's hard to encompass, like, mm -hmm. your, the last few years of your life in, like, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. Mm -hmm. But essentially the, they followed you around and, you know, from, from the high of the first album and all these ex expectations into, you know, COVID and lockdown and being with your family, but also yeah. the stress of, like, um, what, how the stress gets to you in terms of like, well, now I got to follow up this, you know, mm -hmm. the biggest thing in my career, one of the biggest thing, things in music, mm -hmm. you know, awards and everything. Yeah. Um, which is, I think also would be helpful to other artists because I can imagine, you know, they might go through something similar in their own way. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I hope people take something from it. I guess I didn't, 
I, I think even though when I first started, I thought it was going to be this sort of like triumphant documentary, I'm kind of glad um, that it isn't, and I'm glad that it does show quite a lot of the, um, I guess, stresses and anxieties and all the rest of it that I had to go through to get to to make this album or whatever. And and just not even, I don't even think you have to be a musician. I think everybody gets it and everybody in all walks of life has similar situations where it's pressure at work or um, and whatever they're doing in their life. So, um, so yeah, I ho- hopefully people take something from it, but it is, it's a pretty, um, pretty vulnerable thing to be, to have put to be putting out there, I think I, I wasn't expect when I watched it back for the first time. I was like, "Oh God, this is quite." Um, I felt naked, if I can gotcha. be honest with you. And I usually I'm more than happy to be naked, but this time I felt like I was naked, and it was a really cold day. It was a metaphorical naked, as opposed to when you're talking about your uh, new music and stuff, where you're literally naked. When I'm literally naked, yes, it felt I felt bare, bare bottomed, in front of the world, and it's. It's sometimes not a press out, but then sometimes you catch me in the right light. <laughs> and it's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 